Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the active ping angle tuning when surveying to resolve signals at up to 12 kilometers away, what key bindings and settings need to be configured to make this technique work, and some practical advice for getting the most out of this method. Starting in patch 3.17, Passive detection range for ore deposits was significantly reduced, requiring you to get within 1200 meters of a deposit for the signal to resolve from a cloud to individual points. You're able to resolve individual signals at further distances by narrowing the active ping angle and sending a focused ping. However, that requires manual input from you, the pilot. You'll need to familiarize yourself with the proper settings and key bindings to be able to adjust your ping angle on the fly, know the range at which you can expect signals to resolve, understand how accurate you need to be based on that angle, and have an idea of what some of the current limitations are. Now, I'm not the first to discover this, but I have done a lot of testing under different circumstances to help you learn how to best utilize this technique. So let's get into it. You're going to be changing the active ping angle a lot, so you need to be familiar with the keybinds needed and possibly update them for your particular control setup. You can locate and adjust these in the Options menu under Key Bindings, Advanced Controls Customization, Flight Radar Grouping. The default to increase ping angle is the period key, and decrease ping angle is the comma key. I've also bound these to a hat switch on my joysticks so that I can easily increase or decrease angle without having to take my hands off the joysticks. There's an additional setting you need to adjust for this to work in any HUD mode, and that's the Lock Ping Controls to Scan Mode. When enabled, the active ping and increase or decrease ping angle buttons will only function when you're in scanning mode. I recommend disabling that setting so that we have free control, especially if you're in a prospector, as your mining display will give you a bit more details than a typical scan. When adjusting your ping angle, you can step between 360 degrees to 179, 90, 45, 22, 11, 5, and 2 degrees, which you can see on the left side of your HUD for a few seconds any time after you change it. The more focused your ping angle is, the further away you can resolve individual signals, but the more accurate you need to be when aiming your ping without missing the intended target. This overlay shows what those narrower angles look like relative to your scanning HUD. And as you can see, you need to be pretty accurate to hit your target at the narrowest settings, because any rock that falls outside this window won't resolve. You need to have your targeted signal inside the narrow crosshair marks when using the 2 degree angle. Wider settings like the 11 or 22 degree angles are much more forgiving for accuracy, but your range will be more limited. In general, you can use a wider angle as you're within closer range, and it's a fairly logical trade-off between angle and distance. This chart shows the maximum distances to resolve a signal based on what ping angle you're using. I found that if I'm between 10 and 12 kilometers from the signal, I'll be able to resolve individual signals using a 2 degree ping angle. If I'm between 8 and 10 kilometers, I'll use 5 degrees, and anything closer than 8 kilometers can be at 11 degrees or wider. These distances will vary based on the type of ship you're in, and I've classified them as mining or exploration and combat ships. Mining ships like the Prospector and Mole both have an advanced scanning suite, as does the Carrick and other exploration type vehicles while ships like the Avenger, Gladius, Redeemer, and Cutlass all have a less capable scanning system. This makes combat ships less suitable as surveyors, but the trade-off is that they can be more maneuverable and travel between signals more quickly. The two scenarios where this will be the most useful are for finding quantinium clusters on Lyria and surveying for asteroids in deep space, although this technique can be used whenever you're searching for mineable materials. For quantanium hunting on Lyria, there's a useful bug in the spawn logic for surface deposits that makes it so any cluster of rocks on Lyria is guaranteed to be quantanium. In previous patches, you could just do a high-speed flyby and wait until a large cluster of rocks popped up. But with the change to passive detection in 3.17, you would need to fly within about 1200 meters for the individual rocks to resolve. Now in 3.17 and beyond, you need to send out active scanner pings to first locate the signals, then narrow the ping angle and send out a focused scanner ping to resolve that signal to individual rocks. While this is a great way to reliably find quantanium deposits, I do think the Lyria cluster scenario is a bug that's likely to get patched in the future, since it doesn't make sense that other rocks can't spawn in clusters. 
It also means that you're focused on surface mining, where you're more likely to run into NPCs, other players, and possibly pirates or griefers. The alternative scenario is to go out into the asteroid belt and use the same ping angle tuning technique to resolve signals, with the added benefit that your mining display will immediately tell you the asteroid type. I've done a separate video using this method for asteroid surveying and have been using it with great success, so follow the link in the description if you'd like to see a detailed guide. Resolving signals at a distance doesn't mean you're immediately able to scan the deposit and get composition data, so you'll still need to approach the deposit and run a scan for detailed compositional information. I've noticed that if I keep sending active pings as I approach the rock, I can usually get some of the detailed information early, such as the mass, instability, resistance, and occasionally detailed composition. However, that seems to be inconsistent at best. Also. While it can help you resolve signals that you've already detected, the active ping angle does not impact the maximum range at which you'll detect a signal cloud, but it will help you exclude signals that are behind you or at inconvenient angles that would require you to double back on a previous route. When I'm in a rough surveying mode traveling across a moon surface or in the belt, I like to use a 90 degree angle so that I'll still be traveling closer to or parallel to the signal by the time I'm able to target it with a focused ping without having to constantly turn around for signals that I've already passed. And there you have it, my detailed guide to active ping angle tuning. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and check the pinned comment on this video for any corrections or additional details. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And last, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video because that's a surefire way to keep the RNG monster happy.